Hi, this video is not meant to teach you how to use a flow bench. You should have already done that in the engine and the heads class. But what I'm trying to do is give you a quick review and how then to flow the CFM of a carburetor. Uh, we turn the machine on using the AC wavy uh, mark there. And right now, we need to change a few of the settings. We need to look at uh, CFM. We also need to set up the inches of water. We're not going to run 28 inches of water like you might do when you're flowing your valves and, and your head. We need to drop it down to 20.4 inches of water to flow our carburetors. I don't know who came up with that value, but that is the value that is used when checking the CFM of carburetors. So there I've got it set. Uh, I don't need the leakage there, so I need to get out of that. So we're going to move on, and I need to be the regular direction inlet. What we're doing here is looking at the CFM, the maximum CFM range. Now, for our purposes, we're going to stick with right around 300 CFM. That's pretty convenient. Uh, when flowing a carburetor, we're taking the cumulative effect. So. Uh, 300 CFM in theory should allow us to flow a 1200 CFM carburetor. So we're looking at the intake, 300 CFM, and this is the place we need to be to run our tests. You can see nominal, it's 20.4 inches, uh, 6i, the 6 happens to be 300 CFM, and now we're going to turn on the motor. Now at this point we have a lot of noise and uh, we have all kinds of uh, sound going on here. Turn it off, we get the motor switch again, and that will shut things down. All right, here you can see the carburetor flow plate is mounted to the flow bench. That stud is going to stick into this little hole in the carburetor adapter. Once we get that in place, you can see that we simply rotate the entire carburetor and we flow one bore or one venturi one hole at a time and we add those numbers together. Now we're going to mount the carburetor and we'll fast forward putting the bolts and the nuts and the uh, fasteners on. Uh, we don't need it very tight. All we need to do is keep it from sucking air through the gasket. The other thing we need to do is all of these carburetors are flowed wide open throttle. So I'm putting a spring on the primary throttle to keep it wide open. And I've got it set now so that I can go ahead and begin the flow. So if I turn the flow bench on, I can leave it stabilized. I'm going to spin it now. Now I've just measured the hole on the primary throttle side. Moving it clockwise like this, I'm now measuring the secondary hole on the throttle side. Notice I had to open the secondary throttle plate. This is a vacuum secondary carburetor. I'm now flowing the secondary hole on the choke side. One more rotation. I am back on the primary and I am measuring the primary uh, hole that is on the choke side. Back to the primary. Now if I move this counterclockwise from this position I can stay primary then secondary. All right, I'm using the corrected flow from our computer to log the numbers for each of our holes there. Uh, first one, about 154. Second one, looks like it's going to be 177. Third hole then, I'm rotating the carb. Get it stabilized. Looking like 170, we'll call that 171. Last one. Roll it around here. All right. Get the hole centered. Get the flow stabilized. And we're going to we'll call this 167. Now, I will add all of these together, and this is going to give me my total CFM. Now, I'm going to multiply that by 0.92 to account for 
the lack of fuel, and that should be my total CFM. Now, when I add the four individual CFMs, I come up with a value of 669. If I multiply that by 0.92, that's going to take account uh, for the lack of fuel that's in there, according to Holly carburetors. That's going to leave me with about 615 CFM. This works out pretty well. This carburetor is rated at 600 CFM. Uh, so I'd say we're, we're pretty close with this measurement. Thanks for watching.